not risky deep sea oil drilling? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm reluctant to put the lead. There is a process of a submissions received by which it is presented uh, officially into this parliament. Question number three, John Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. What recent reports has he received on progress in building a faster growing economy that supports more jobs and higher incomes for all New Zealanders? Honourable Bill English. Mr. Speaker, this morning, uh, Statistics New Zealand issued the GDP data for the December quarter 2013. It showed the economy continued to grow at above 3% annually. Uh, confirming that New Zealand is on the right track. The 0.9% growth in the December quarter took annual growth uh, to 3.1%. Uh, so we provided we stick with the government's economic programme and New Zealand households and businesses continue to rebalance their debt, uh, reorganise their affairs and continue to be more productive. Uh, we will have a faster growing economy that can provide higher wages and new jobs for those who need them. Supplementary question, John Hayes. What were some of the main sources of growth in the latest GDP data? Honourable Bill. Mr English. Speaker, uh, the economic growth in the year to the end of December was reasonably broad-based. I took particular pleasure in seeing that manufacturing which was said to be in crisis, said to be in crisis, made the largest, not just the median or nearly largest, but the largest contribution to GDP growth, increasing by 2.1%, taking overall manufacturing activity to the highest level since March 2006. So the manufacturing sector which apparently is in crisis, is now at its highest level of economic contribution since March 2006. Interestingly, wholesale trade, including machinery and equipment investment, also grew significantly. In fact, investment in plant machinery and equipment generally associated with manufacturing was up 7.5 per cent to the highest level ever since the GDP series began. We look forward to more opposition-nominated crises of this sort. Supplementary question, Honourable David Parker. Are non-primary non manufactured exports still dropping and still below 2008 levels? Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, so now the opposition, the Labour Party's story is... The parts of order, the order. I have a point of order from Grant Robertson. That was an extremely direct and specific question, and the, and the um, Minister of Finance starting it with an attack on the opposition is order. not within standing orders. Order. The Minister had hardly started his answer before the member's on his feet. Order. I want to hear the answer. And I can't hear the answer if the member's raising a point of order saying the question hasn't been adequately addressed. Honourable Bill English. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Speaker point of order. Point of order, Grant Robertson. With respect, Mr Speaker, my point of order was that the Minister began his answer and with an Member attack Morris on the Labour seat. Party. And I've already said I haven't had enough chance to listen to the answer to consider whether that's appropriate. Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, <coughs> we'll just leave the answer. Order. I will hear from the Honourable Trevor Mallard, but I will expect it to be a new point of order. It, of it order. is a new point of order, Good. sir, and it relates, ex it relates to your last ruling when you said you would wait to see if the attack was appropriate. I didn't Sir, it could not have been appropriate from a straight question. Order. I didn't say that. I said I'd wait to hear the answer. The answer's hardly started before a member's on his feet saying it's unsatisfactory. The question has been asked. It's now so long since it was asked because of what I consider wasteful points of order. I'm going to ask the questioner to ask the question again, then we'll hear the answer. Thank Honourable you. David Parker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Are non-primary manufactured exports still declining and still below the level they were at in 2008 in real terms? Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, I can't confirm those numbers, but I can confirm that a fair bit of the growth of manufacturing comes from the further processing of primary production, which I thought the Labour Party supported. 
but now apparently it's the wrong sort of growth and it doesn't count. The fact that people get up on Monday morning and go to work to process to process our primary produce apparently Order. is not real Order. jobs. If I hear an interjection from that uh, from Grant Robertson again, he will be leaving the chamber. Speaker. Point of order, Grant Robertson. Mr Speaker, under your rulings and under the rulings of the previous Speaker, when members on this side of the ha House ask a direct question with no politics associated at all, we, oh. we have been given a direct answer. That is not what the Minister of Finance said there, and that is why I was interjecting. Order. And I'm saying to the member, under no circumstances will I accept him uh, interjecting at that level. If he wants to raise a point of order, stand and do so. But don't stand there barracking across the chamber. I expect on this occasion the, the question has... Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order. Point of order, Dr Russell Norman. Mr Speaker, this is about standing order 383 in the content of replies. This was a very specific question. It did not bring the National Party or the Labor Party or the Green Party into it. Standing Order 383 is very clear. It says the reply must be concise and confined to the subject matter of the question asked and not include all of those other kind of references. Clearly, the Minister of Finance keeps breaching this standing order. We are asking you to enforce it. And the member is making a perfectly legitimate uh, point of order. I think, on, on, in hindsight, I let that answer go on far longer than I should have. Supplementary question, John Hayes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. How does New Zealand's latest quarterly GDP growth compare with growth rates in other developed economies? And what are forecasters saying about New Zealand's growth outlook for the next few years? Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, the uh, New Zealand's growth rate uh, is better than quite a few developed countries. But of course the real measure of its success is whether it's providing jobs for more jobs for New Zealanders and higher incomes for New Zealanders. And the good news is that forecasters are generally expecting that New Zealand's growth rate will be maintained uh, through 2014. This, however, is no cause for complacency or for a fiscal lolly scramble. This country has a lot, a lot of work to do yet to ensure that every New Zealander who can work can get a job and that all those New Zealanders who have a job uh, are paid in a manner that they regard as appropriate. Supplementary question, John Hayes. What other economic indicators are contributing to New Zealand's stronger economic outlook and supporting more jobs and higher incomes? Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, there's, there's quite, a number of, quite a number of indicators, some of which we've discussed before, such as business and consumer confidence. Uh, but one important one is that in the year to March, uh, productivity increased by 2.1 per cent, uh, above the annual rate of 1.6 per cent. In the longer run, it is those increases in, productivities, in productivity which will underpin higher incomes for New Zealanders. And the government... Uh, will continue to work hard to help create the conditions that enable businesses to invest more, uh, for New Zealanders to get more skills so we can continue to raise productivity because there is so much more potential. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Honourable David Parker. How has his government's corporate cronyism handouts, subsidies and paybacks to large multinationals and corporate donors to the National Party how have that? How have those? Uh, Mr. Speaker, may I repeat my question? It's with well, that, an order. Order, order. The difficulty is, we've just had a discussion around expecting answers to be concise. Equally, there's a standing order asking questions to be concise. I'm relatively liberal in interpreting that to allow a political exchange, but um, the reason there is disorder is the tone of the question that's been asked by the member. If he wants to continue with that, I'm certainly not going to rule it out of order, but it's likely order, it's likely that it will engender a response from the government side. Honourable David Parker, how has start that, the question how, again. How has his government's corporate cronyism, handouts, subsidies? Order. Oh, Mr Speaker, that is a disreputable reference, and it would be uh, no different to me making an allegation that the Labour Party yesterday introduced, for example, a policy for cash to fund their campaign. Everyone knows that's what's happening. 
But it's not appropriate to say it. It's not appropriate for him to put that in an answer. And it most definitely uh, is outside of the content of questions requirement of, of 383, as was cited by the opposition a few moments ago. The difficulty with the situation is that those words have now been used for some months and have not received any objection from the government at the time. To now order, they order, I'm suggesting to the member that she's wrong. I have heard those words used on a number of occasions. Um, I don't think they bring credit to this House at all, but because I've allowed them through in the past, I cannot see that we can change the course of action. Honourable David Parker. Like short, How has his government's corporate cronyism, handouts, subsidies, paybacks to large multinationals and corporate donors to the National Party, including by amongst others Judith Collins, helped to provide better jobs and higher incomes that for New Zealanders? Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, uh, I simply disagree with the member. And it is ironic, coming the day after the Labor Party has announced the results of its interaction with the forestry industry, uh, where the Labor Party policy hands out tens of millions of dollars of cash to a number of New Zealand's biggest corporates, who probably, through some confidential trust created by David Cunliffe, will be funding the Labor Party. Supplement supplementary. Order. Supplementary. Order. Order. Supplementary question, Honourable David. Parker. Why is the corporate cronyism he tries to justify a better option than providing tax incentives to the whole of a productive value added export sector like forest processing, which will create better jobs and higher wages? Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the uh, government has no uh, activity that could be described as corporate cronyism. We've made a few pragmatic decisions about one or two, one or two significant uh, pressures on the New Zealand economy, and I think most New Zealanders have regarded them as a fair go. What is clear, though, is that the Labor Party has a different view. Industry by industry, they seem to be going round uh, designing policy for cash handouts to people who will almost certainly be incentivised to support them in the election. Question number four. Point of order, Honourable Jerry Brown. Mr. Speaker, I don't want to in any way dispute the ruling that you, well, not really the ruling, the comments that you gave to the House earlier uh, on the matters uh, that we were discussing. But it would appear that it's, uh, you'd have to go back to 1952 before there was a definitive spe uh, Speaker's ruling about the Im imputing of improper motives to the government, which effectively is what uh, the Honourable uh, David Carter did. I wonder, sir, if you might consider that uh, ruling and come back to us uh, to see just whether or not the ruling uh, that was uh, 53 uh, still stands some uh, 50 years later. Uh, speaking of the point of order, Mr. I will hear from Grant Roberts. Um, uh, when you, when you, uh, I think you are going to take up the, uh, the Leader of the House's invitation, and when you do so, perhaps you might like to consider the answer that the Minister of Finance just gave, impugning the Labor Party and suggesting that we were somehow making policy for, um, for, um, for money that we were going to be donated. Something I, order, order, I don't need any more assistance. I will certainly have a close look at the matter because I suspect it's going to be something that's raised on more than one occasion as we lead towards the election. But um, I will, uh, in response to Grant Robinson's point, particularly note that when, an answer, uh, when a question is asked that does have imputations, etc., it's likely to give an opportunity for a, uh, order. I accept the member didn't challenge. The point I'm making is that it does give a, a, a significant licence to her as ever answering the question. Question number four, Honourable Nanaya Mahuta. Kia ora, Mr Speaker. My Kia question. Ora.